it's Rebecca Vernon again. This is my welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, so today I've uh, once gone out and got myself a staple gun. Um, I have used one of these before, but I've always borrowed one. So I wanted to get one for myself. So I've bought the Stanley Start Sharp Start Sharp Soup Shooter, which is a heavy duty staple gun. Um, so we've, we've cut it open already because they're so difficult to get in. It's the sort of thing where you buy you buy a packet of scissors in a plastic box and you need the scissors to unwrap. So, so that's what we've bought. Um, it costs £21 from b &Q. So this is the this is the guy, and we've bought some staples to go with it. I think they were about an extra five pounds. So I've got this old um, footstool, which used to be in our cinema, and it's got a lift up top to it, so you can have storage in there. So I'm wanting to use that to put Lawrence's toys in, which are in there at the moment. So it's an old, it's got an old leather top to it. Uh, we got rid of the sofa and um, we gave that away to somebody who's going to renovate that. We don't need it anymore. So what I want to do is I want to recover this. So we've bought some fabric. We went to Liverpool in the week while we were going out and about. We went to Speak Hall for the day. But of course, I always have to combine that with some bargain hunting as we're going round. So we went to a, a lovely place that I visit regularly called the Fabric Outlet. And there you can find curtain fabrics and upholstery fabrics for 4 99 a metre. I know, 4 99 a metre, where can you get fabric for that price? So I've bought this lovely tweedy check to recover. Um, so what we're going to need to do is take the top off the bottom it's got all these mechanics inside so we need to take those off we'll need to take the feet off take the toys out of it and then we'll have to take the actual i'm going to take the actual leather off it as well right so we've taken all the staples out of the backing fabric here and we've taken the fixings off so this is the top panel the bit that moves up so we've taken that off and we're just in the process of taking all these staples out of here. So just using a screwdriver to lever them up and then using the pliers to pull them out. So it's amazing how many staples you get. That's only the back, back fabric so far. And we've done about two sides of the, of the leather so far so i'm just going to carry on taking all these staples out lifting them up with the screwdriver and then taking them out with the pliers all the way around until we can get to the stage where we can remove the leather i think it's always best to remove the original fabric because otherwise if it starts falling apart underneath you just get bits coming through your nice new fabric and then that will spoil your new fabric and your new covering so we've got all these staples out now so it's just a case of she says simply um taking off this grotty leather i think this is about 15 years old this still so well, maybe not that old, maybe Miles, actually Miles was born. It was probably, it's probably about 12 years old, so yeah. So we'll discard that. Right, so it's all got all wadding around it. It's got the webbing on the back, which is all still good. So what we'll need to do next is we'll just check that I've loaded these staples up right in here. Yeah, that's coming out. Nice staple in there. So what we need to do is lay the fabric out on the floor. And then we're going to cut out the piece of fabric that's big enough to put the stool on. Okay, 
So, right, we need to make sure that we've got enough to pull up and into there. So we'll maybe go that, there we go, just enough to get to there. We don't want to waste it. And just enough to get into there. Yeah, okay. And so I'm just gonna cut a square around that we know is the right size. We've checked that it will pull up onto the sides. These are my fabric scissors, but if you don't have fabric scissors, you can just use a pair of kitchen scissors. Okay, so I've cut the fabric and made sure that it will go round and come up to the sides onto the backing, um, up to where it was previously stapled. So how you want to start this off is by taking the centre of each side and staple gunning to say three staples there in the middle to get that side up and then turn it around and do the opposite side to that. So you need to be keeping your fabric straight, pulling it up, pull it up tight so you get a really nice tight finish and you want to staple three times again, somewhere roughly in the centre on each on that side. Then we'll turn it round again and do the other way. So give it a really good stretch pull it up really nice and tight now the same principle applies to if you're wanting to recover some dining chairs a lot of the dining chairs have a seat pad which will just unscrew that you can just take the staples out and recover a seat like this so it's basically just the cost of your staple gun if it's the first time you've done it and the fabric so it can be a really cheap thing to do and a lot cheaper than buying a load of new dining chairs so it's a great way to update a room my sister's just recently done two sets of dining chairs that go in different rooms and she actually used the same fabric so even though it's a different dining set when it comes together, all the seat cushions will be the same. So it'll look really nice together, especially for when we go at Christmas time and it'll all be matching. Right, so I've done both, all four corner, all four sides in the middle there. So then we just need to start working our way further out to the corners. So if we do say another two or three to get it further, to the edges round each side you can see it's really coming on it looks really no, nice you can't because you're not holding you need to don't lift it up just leave okay. it on the floor okay can you hear me yes you want to speak up a little bit So keep going round to each side, do another three staples. I'm doing those about an inch apart, so I'm doing like sort of another three or four inches towards the corner. Keep Stop. Okay, keep going, adding another three or four inches worth of staples and putting about three in each Bit. keep pulling the fabric up so that it's nice and taut on the other side that's it okay so oh i think that corner perhaps haven't gone quite as far over in that corner right 
Okay, so now we're going to come to the corners. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can either do it so that you end up, I have to show you this in a different way. Okay, so I can either do it so that you can end up with your two pieces of fabric here. Can you see? Folded inwards so that you get the two folds coming to the corner like that and tuck in at the side it depends on how you want to have it so you can just tuck in the excess fabric bringing the corners together so you'll just have a little pleat on there tuck away tuck away tuck away into there so you can just get a nice little neat corner on that and then you can staple that from the reverse so that looks quite nice or the other way you can do it is to have them going out ways pull it tight on the corners and you just have the little pleats going out ways right so i think what we'll do is we'll just cut some of the excess fabric on the reverse here if we just cut that corner off, I'm going to pull the fabric in the corner up and then we're going to create the first pleat look that I showed you. We'll pull that in at the corner. And then we'll pull this one up, tucking in as much of the fabric on that corner as you can to get a nice neat edge. So that's the first corner there. Okay, so that's the first corner. So I'm just going to go round and do all the other corners like that. So the first bit again, pull the middle bit up on the corner, put a staple in it. Oh, that one didn't staple. Oh gosh, I can't have gone through. Oh, I must have done. I need some more staples in this. I think I've got the hang of it now. The first lot of staples to put in were really hard. I thought, oh no, this is a good start. I can't even get the staples in the gun. We've got no chance. Right, okay. So you just slot the staples in upside down. Push the mechanism in and it just clicks into place. So that's really simple. So put a couple of staples, put a staple in the corner there and then just tuck your corner in so you get a really nice pleat on the corner. I know probably for most people the most nerve-wracking part of this is actually cutting the fabric um, because you're scared that you're going to make a mistake and cut it too short. What I would just say to you is always make it plenty big enough. You can cut off the excess when you get to this stage if it's too big it's not a problem once you've stapled it into place and you know you've got it nice and tight then you can cut the excess fabric off if you're one of those people that's a little bit worried that you're going to be get, getting not the not enough fabric in so pull that tight pop a little staple in and you know if you keep stapling along that is what's going to hold the fabric nice and tall so make sure that you put them in regularly as i'm going around the corner i'm probably doing them about half an inch apart um so that we make sure that we get them really nice and tight so let's cut a bit more off on that corner because that'll be bulky enough with the mechanism as it is tuck it away again on the corner and let me just say if anybody starts doing this and gets to a bit where they think oh gosh i don't know what i'm doing here i've gone wrong or whatever just send me some photos i'm happy to help if uh, you just need a little bit of guidance on the last bit of it or whether you've done it right send me some photos and i'm happy to see if there's anything that i can do to help you to get it perhaps a little bit better Okay, so if you do need some help, just pop your photographs um, and send them to the link that's in the description of the um, YouTube video today and I can always help. I'd love to see your pictures um, anyway. So um, you can tag me in anything that you do. So it would be great to see if I've inspired you to do something. 
I really do hate all this throwing stuff away and I always think if you find something in upholstery that's that's really comfy like the stool is a really useful thing to have in your lounge with a little bit of extra storage in it you really don't want to get rid of it so why not bring it up to date and um, bring the colours together in your lounge um, so this has got the main colours in my lounge my sofas are gold um, and my carpet is grey so it's bringing the colours together really nicely so if I lift this up Miles Miles is my cameraman today he's back at it if I lift this up can you see the cushion now right it's full of bits off the black leather Richard's just said that's my husband by the way he's just busy taking apart the mechanism off the bottom of the stool so these are all the bits that have shed off the black leather so we'll have to give it a brush off but I think that's looking absolutely superb I'm really really happy with that it's nice and taut and stretched over the top and I think it's going to be really really lovely so that's cost me that will have cost me £10 for the fabric £9.90 for 99 a metre um for 95 a meter i think it's something like that anyway that's two meters of that and then the price the price of my staple gun but you know that could be something that you already have so that's a tenner for revamping a stool so right we're just going to take off the feet and the other mechanism and then we'll be taking off the leather on the bottom part right so i've just put the backing fabric on the back um lining up the holes for the mechanism so we've taken all the feet off it and taken the staples off from underneath and there was a backing fabric on this as well. So we've taken that off. Now we're just going to peel the leather off to find out how to get the leather off from the inside of it. So we'll just peel this off. So this is covered in foam here. Well, this might be the most difficult bit because I don't know how I'm going to get this bit off. Okay, so we've cut, we've actually ended up cutting the leather off on the inside, um, but it'll be fine because I'm just going to use this to go over, and that is the raw, not the raw edge, it's the edge of the fabric anyway. So that will be nice and neat inside, and that won't be a problem. So, what we're going to do, I've cut a little strip of the fabric that will just fit round neatly like that all the way round so what we're going to do we're going to start with not doing that bit we're going to start with this bit here so I've cut it so it is just long enough to fit around and to be honest that's the length of fabric that I've got which is just the side edge so I'm going to just start off by stapling at this top bit here. So I've left enough here to be able to turn in. I'm just going to staple this bit up here. So I'm going to pull oh, this one down here. Then I'm going to pull that tight so that, that edge is just joining yeah. yeah. together. Yeah. And I'm also trying to match the check here at the front so we get a nice line running all the way around. You can actually buy some upholstery pins. Now you can buy some upholstery pins that come in a strip that you just hammer in. I haven't got any of those at the moment. Um, you can buy them in singles or then you can buy them in a strip and I think every fifth one is then. No, that's not going in. Right, so next we're going to do the same thing that we did on the top, pulling it round, stretching it round and firing the staples in here. We're going to do it at each side so we're just going to do, don't put your finger in the way Rebecca, mm -hmm. pull it down, 
put a staple in there. Always do the centre first. As I say, the edge in here, I know it looks like a raw edge, it's just like the edge of a blanket, and it actually is the edge of the fabric. So it's not going to unrove. <laughs> wanting to do this for ages I only just had chance this week let's go to the fabric shop to get the 4.99 stuff I always try to tie it in with going somewhere else so uh, my family though that every trip we have out for a day out ends in me going somewhere where I usually can collect a bargain I don't feel like I've got had a, a proper day out if I haven't got a bargain <laughs> So, keep going, eventually you get that your hand hurts a bit, but you don't have to do it all in one day, I'm just doing it all in one day because of, you know, you can just do a little bit at a time. So I'll just put another one in, that's which is words of wisdom for you there, just put one strip in at a time, I can't actually fit two strips in, it doesn't, I've tried that, it doesn't actually, it's not long enough to fit in two strips. So. Make sure I've got that in nicely. Oh, oh my god. No, I think I'll have to get to it from this side. There we go. It's definitely more difficult to do it from this angle than it was to do on the top because, of course, you've got to get inside and you've got to get it at an angle to get your gun in because, of course, it's only so deep. Right, so we're on the last corner, hooray, and then we can do the bottom bit. So this is the, obviously the most difficult corner because this is the one where we started and where we've got the join. So let's see, how can we do this? Right. <laughs> scared of stapling myself, that's why I would never have an electric one. Right, so that, I think that's looking really nice. It's all really tight round there. Fantastic, right, so now we've got to the base. Now, this is where the feet were underneath, so they were screwed in. So we just need to make sure that we don't actually go over the holes. I'm going to staple bef where it previously was stapled, which is round the edge, and these are the holes here where the feet were. So we're just going to make it nice and tight all the way along there and then afterwards we'll be able to cut off the excess. There's a good tip for you, get a drink before you started and then it'll stop you from wanting to give up. feet at different levels if there's fabric in the way okay so I'm just going to cut that down there where that bit I've already stapled so I've stapled at that end so let's cut this end off I don't want too much fabric waste fabric underneath Doesn't have to be neat, just chop it off. Right, okay, so let's cut that, up. let's do that on the corner. <laughs>
think that bit will have to do it in that way. I'm not really happy about firing it towards the sartre. Right, okay. Maybe if I tip it up like that, that's better. And we can just tuck it in underneath there. As long as it's not... Right, okay, so that bit's fastened in. Now underneath, on that side, we're just gonna cut off the last bit on this side. So this is the base fabric underneath. So I'm trying to line the holes back up so that it'll go back on easily. Right, so now my husband has very kindly, oh now which way round have I got it? Yeah, my husband has very kindly put the feet back on and the mechanism back in. So now we have our completed stool. And I think you'll agree that looks tons better than it did before. I think anybody would have been ready to throw that stool away. What you need to do is measure, if yours is like mine, measure around the bottom. And that you would cut out the whole length. So I bought two metres two meters was just enough to go all the way around the stool at the base part and then the top bit was cut out of the side of that so now I've got enough left here I could actually I could if I wanted to just do the fringing on the edge here like on the side to fringe it off and make it like a throw that I could put over the end of my sofa uh, which is it really easy to do basically all you're doing is you're pulling out the threads at the end here just pulling them out and then you'll leave see that one's coming out there just pull a few threads out and that will leave the same edge here as you've got and you could have a nice throw to put over the side of your sofa um, but I think what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to use this to make some cushions. So I've definitely got enough to do if you've got big cushions, if you like a big cushion, there's enough to do two really big, like 20, 22 inch squares there. I'd probably do smaller than that, even though I've got a massive sofa. Uh, well, I've got two sofas, but I'd probably do about four cushions out of this. And then if I just put them around, then I've got a three-seater sofa, a two-seater sofa and a chair. If we just put one on each chair, it'll just bring it all together. So yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really, really pleased that I did it. And I'm really glad that we managed to get some fabric that I've got the grey and the um, okra in it. And uh, I, think it'll, I think you'll agree, it looks really nice for £10. So yeah, loving it. If you, if you have a go, please drop pictures on the link so that I can see what you've been doing. And I really hope that this, ex this inspires other people out there to do something like I've done. Or if you want to start on something small, something like a um, dressing table stool, all you need to do is undo the screws underneath and then you can take the backing fabric off like I did with the staples and uh, just pop some fabric over and staple gun it back on. That's the easiest thing to start on. And you, and similarly, um, a dining chair that's just got a wooden back and a base, a base cushion that's screwed on is the same sort of thing. So if you want to find out more things like this, and I'll do in lots and lots of crafts as well, please hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell at the side. Don't forget, it is free to follow me and uh, I'll get I'll we'll be doing lots more videos um, not sure that there will be that anything else will be upholstery because at the moment I haven't got anything else to do it but there'll certainly be loads more crafts coming along and householdy things so I'll, I'll let you let you see the cushions when I've done those okay have a rest have a nice rest of the weekend thanks for viewing bye